Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Pray First, a conversation we have Monday through Friday right here on the Pastor Doug page. If you join us live during the 7 o'clock hour on this 16th of December, 2021, hashtag live, that's the little pound button, the little uh, tic-tac-toe button, hashtag live. If you join us recorded at any other time, any other time than 7 o'clock on the 16th of December, 2021, hashtag recorded and let us know that you're here. That way, if you also comment, I will be able to respond to those comments. If you ask questions, I'll attempt to answer those questions. Uh, but this is an interactive conversation. This is not just me sitting here talking to a screen. I'm talking to Sean Leonard. I'm talking to Stacy Matlock. I'm talking to Barbie Davis. I'm talking to uh, Barbie Davis Shook. You know, you know who you are. I'm talking about to Rebecca McElnelly. I'm talking to you, Daryl. I'm talking to Skip. I'm talking to Danielle Cothern. I'm talking to you guys. So if I'm talking to you guys, talk, say something to me. Say, what's up? Hi, how are you doing? Uh, because this isn't recorded. This isn't like a video vlog. Uh, we are absolutely live. I'm sitting at my desk right now. I've got a cup of espresso that I turned into a latte, I guess, because I use quite a bit of cream. Good morning. Jan, good morning, Mel. Good morning, Chris Weatherford. Good morning, everyone. I'm so excited about this topic that we're talking about. I've never really studied the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and the tree of life to this degree. I mean, it, it seems so obvious now, but before I read it historically, that in the beginning, this what this is what happened chronologically. This is what happened. But what I think I failed to realize, and I think many of us do, is that with a little bit of contemplation, the story of the tree of life and the story of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil is the story of us, and it helps us understand us. It helps us understand those who are far from God. But it also helps us understand those of us who are followers of Jesus and the decisions we make good and bad, how we feel towards others, how we proclaim the gospel, maybe not to people sometimes, but at people because we're trying to get them to change their behavior rather than uh, be made new. So this is just staggering to me. In Genesis chapter 3, we've talked about how Diabolos slithered in as a snake. Everybody, everybody hashtag snake. That, that Satan, that Lucifer, that Diabolos slithered in as a snake. What are you and I afraid of snakes? Why, why would someone be afraid of a snake? Well, it's pretty obvious. They bite. They bite. That's obvious. When Diabolos tries to attack you, when Lucifer, Satan, the snake tries to attack me, when he tries to attack us, it won't be obvious, okay? It's not always going to be obvious. It's not going to be one of those seven deadly sins, necessarily. It's not going to be pride. It might be comparison, for example, Lucifer didn't use his mouth to bite Adam and Eve's flesh. Lucifer used his mouth to bite Adam and Eve's spirit. And they died. Spiritually, they died. He, he's not going to be so obvious. It's not going to look bad sometimes. The things that you're doing is going to look good because you have the knowledge of good and evil. And since you have that, you feel like you have the power to do good and that you have the strength to avoid evil. But that's not true. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil does not give you. You have a knowledge of good, not the power to do good. You have a knowledge of evil, but not the strength or the ability to avoid it. So there's a lot we have to put trust in God over. Not just our salvation, not just that there's an eternity out there, not that just that he'll save us, but you and I need faith in God to do anything or have any fruit especially good. 
So Diabolos convinces Eve to take of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And immediately she becomes aware. And with her awareness, she becomes guilty, shameful, and condemned. Which separates her from God. There is nothing that can separate you and I from God when Jesus has saved us and we're born again. However... Born-again saved people can feel like, oftentimes, that God is missing, that God is not present. And you can feel that based on your actions, what you've done you know, evil or what you haven't done good. If I would just do some more good, God would be in it. If I would just do less evil, God would be here. How many of you have ever asked, and I want you to answer with yep, yep, down there in the comments. How many of you ever asked, where's God? Where's God? I hope that this message doesn't um, cause you any more spiritual exhaustion. I think that there is a spiritual exhaustion when you dig, 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 you think, 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 you contemplate, contemplate, contemplate. What I hope this message does is build a faith inside of you to stop eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil because that tree is still here. We are still reaping the repercussions of Adam and Eve taking it, but you and I are still eating it. So I hope that this will cause you to turn your eyes towards the tree of life and that grace that will pour out of its leaves, that grace that will pour out of its fruit will also become the grace you give others. So if you've ever asked, where's God? Hashtag yep, yep. Because as a pastor and a leader, I think I want to lead our church to where God is. As a father, I want to lead my children to where God is. As a husband, I want to lead our marriage to where God is. And it can get kind of, you know, kind of crazy. It can get kind of chaotic. It can get kind of confusing well, is God here? Is God there? Does he want me to do this? Does he want me to do that? And, and all of my relationship with God can be so based on the tree of the knowledge of good and evil that I don't even realize that the tree of life is standing next to me and that he loves me and that in him I find rest. In him I find protection. In him I find grace. And that protection, come on, in, in, in that, that rest, that grace, I want to extend to others. So let's look at where God is this morning and continue on this snake theme that we've been talking about from Genesis chapter 3. Today, let's go to Exodus chapter 4, verse 1 through 9. Exodus 4, 1 through 9. And let's figure out where, where God is. Then Moses answered and said, Now this is before the children of Israel are released by Pharaoh. Moses is speaking to Pharaoh. Uh, right now he's talking to God. God's trying to send Moses to go talk to Pharaoh, and Moses says to God, what if they don't believe me? What if, what if Pharaoh doesn't believe that you are God or that I represent you? I mean, he knows me. I've been, I've been his brother for a long time. He may think I'm just making up something. I was pretty good at manipulation. Uh, so, God, how are you going to prove yourself? Here we go. Exodus chapter 4, verse 1. Through nine. Then Moses answered and said to God, But suppose they will not believe me. Suppose they will not listen to my voice. Suppose they say, The Lord has not appeared to you. So the Lord said to him, What's in your hand? Everybody hashtag hand, please, everybody. Hashtag hand. What's in your hand? And Moses said, A rod. Everybody hashtag rod. And he said, cast it on the ground. So Moses cast it on the ground and it became a serpent. It became a snake. How about that? Remember in the wilderness yesterday, we talked about the fact that the snakes come among the people and began to bite them and they began to die. God said, take a rod and wrap a snake around it, a bronze rod, bronze snake, and lift it in the air. And those who believe, those who have to stay away, put their trust in, they can be healed, will come and look at this bronze and it will become the curse for them representing Christ. Jesus became the curse for us. Not only did Jesus become the curse for us so that we could be saved from the snake bite, 
but he also became a curse for us so he could save us from the snake bite of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Not just from death, not just from sin, but from separation, for, from performance, from, from being a dancing monkey, uh, from, from being someone's slave to becoming someone's son, from, from chaos and confusion to, to peace and, and, and grace and mercy. Cast it on the ground, and cast on the ground, became a serpent. So here's this rod becoming a serpent. Moses ran from it. Don't just, don't just walk past that. <laughs> when <laughs> Moses could not believe what just happened. The last, you know, time he saw a snake, it was attached to somebody's face in a pond somewhere. And he's not, he's not, you know, he isn't lifting up snakes yet, like we talked about yesterday. We're not reading this chronologically. He's not used to rods becoming snakes and snakes representing, you know, the curse and snakes representing Diabolos. And now God is telling him to throw his rod. Look, if, if God told you to throw a stick on the ground and it became a snake, you, you're not going to just stand there. Moses hightailed it out of there. Moses ran. He, he ran from it. And the Lord said to Moses, reach out your hand. In other words, before he said reach out your hand, God probably had to tell Moses, hey, come back. Reach out your hand and take it by the tail. He reached out his hand, he caught it. It became a rod in his hand again. Now that was faith. I don't, it would have took me a few more moments probably to reach for the snake's butt. He said, listen, that they may believe that the Lord is the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, that, that I have appeared to you. Furthermore, the Lord said to him, now put your hand in your bosom. And he put his hand in his bosom, like this right here. Put your hand, take your hand, put it in your bosom, God says. And he put his hand in his bosom. And when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous like snow. It was diseased. It was covered. Leprous like snow. And God said, put it back in again. So he put it back in again. And when he drew it out this time, behold, it was restored like the rest of his flesh. Then it will be, if they do not believe you nor heed the message of the first sign, they may believe that of the latter sign. In other words, if they don't believe the stick becoming a snake, maybe they're going to believe the leprous hand. And it shall be, if they do not believe even these two signs or listen to your voice, that you shall take water from the river, pour it on the dry ground. The water which you take from the river will become blood on dry land. Let's take a look at this real quick because... If you just read this, it sounds like God has uh, been shrooning and uh, maybe wearing some tie-dye, throwing up some peace signals and watching MASH. Just wasn't really paying attention to what was going on on earth. But the reality of this is, where's God? So when you read the Old Testament in simply a historical fashion, you're going to miss where's God. You're going to miss where's God now. What is God saying when you contemplate the scriptures of the Old Testament and realize Jesus is everywhere, then you're going to realize that Jesus is at this interaction between Jehovah, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and this interaction with Moses, that Jesus is there. Not just the Holy Spirit, not just God, but that Jesus is there. Have you ever wondered, where's God? Have you ever thought, well, you know, Jesus is in this, but he ain't in that. How do you know that? But well, I have a knowledge of good and evil. If, if, you're, if your knowledge of God is simply a knowledge of good and evil, you're missing out on who God is. If you've ever wondered, well, is Jesus in that church or is he in that church? Is he in this place? Is he in that place? Is he in this organization or that organization? Sometimes it's not a this or that, it's an or. I need you to understand that. That, that, that sometimes when you think, well, you know, God's not in that, God's not in this, uh, you're not basing that on God, nor his characteristics, nor his history, nor his resume. You're basing that on the knowledge of good and evil. Well, I'm in the right church, and they're in the wrong church, and if they do it this way, and if they wouldn't do it that way, then, then God would be there. But if you were to go to Israel, and you walk into the temple where Jesus walked, and you touch the, the, the cobblestone floor, 
uh, Jesus was there, but not only was he there, he still is. And if you were to go down the street to the Roman Orthodox uh, cathedral they built later, and, and you walk inside there, and you got down on the floor and touched it, and you thought, well, Jesus didn't walk here. Jesus isn't here. Uh, you would be misguided, misled, and, and not understand uh, who God is because he, he's there. Now, this story is not some random act where God's trying to prove his awesomeness, okay? Um, let's, hey, Moses, <laughs> let's go show him a few tricks, man. Let's do some party favors, get Pharaoh all worked up, and uh, we're going to get the folks out of Egypt, and it's going to be great, man, uh, and we'll do something else later. Maybe part the sea, uh, maybe pour some water, uh, you know, just, just, no, no. This is not a random story, a random act of God with some party tricks so that he could prove uh, his God awesomeness. Uh, a stick became a snake. Moses put a clean hand into his bosom and drew out a leprous hand. Returning the leprous hand to his bosom, he pulls out a clean hand. And, and finally, he pours water on the ground and it becomes blood. Let's just look at a couple of these and explain and think about and contemplate what could God be saying about this? Where was Jesus? Where was Jesus? Let's look at the hand first. Moses takes his hand and God says, stick it in your bosom. And he does. He pulls it out. It's diseased. It's leprous. It's cursed. Leprosy represent cursing. Then God said, stick it back in there, pull it out, and it was healed. It was clean. The unclean became clean. Let's, let's talk about that. John chapter 1, verse 18. What does the New Testament say about this? No one has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, who is in the bosom of the Father, he has declared God. Where was Jesus in this interaction between Jehovah and Moses? When Jehovah says, son, go speak to Pharaoh and you let him know that I am God. And that there are right things and that there are wrong things, but the right thing is always listening to my voice and following and understanding whether you believe it or not, Pharaoh, I'm going to show you who I am. I'm going to show you Jesus Christ as much as, as, much as Matthew, come on, as much as Mark, as, as much as John, as much as James, as much as Peter, as much as Paul saw Jesus. Moses, I'm showing you Jesus right now. No one has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son who is in the bosom of the Father. So the Father says, take your hand. I'm about to show you my son. My son is at the right hand of me. The right hand of God the Father. It is said 25 times in the New Testament alone that Jesus is at the right hand of God. I want you to take Jesus and I want you to put it in your bosom. Not only the begotten son who is in the bosom of the Father, John 1.18 I'm going to take what is clean. I'm going to bring it to my chest. I'm going to allow him to take the curse from you. Leprosy is going to rest on him. Sin is going to rest on him. Death is going to rest on him. You're going to bury it back into the Father. And three days later, clean. That he is taking you, he is offering you, he is soaking in your sin, he is taking in your guilt, he is taking in your shame, he is taking in your <sighs> guilt, he's taking in your curse, he's sucking the venom out of you through him. And he comes out clean. Jesus was in that interaction. The water, 
Let's look at it real quick. Moses takes his staff to Pharaoh and throws it on the ground and it, it becomes a snake. It becomes a snake. The sorcerers say, cool trick, Moses, because Lucifer always has a substitute. Lucifer always has a knockoff. Diabolos always has a $5 fake Rolex. The sorcerers throw their sticks on the ground. They too become snakes. Listen, Lucifer always has another uh, accusation against you. Lucifer always has another reason of evil to condemn and to restrain you. Lucifer always has your history. He always has your past. He always has the word of God to, to use against you. <laughs> Messages, books, teachings, the way other people live, the way other people do things. He always has a way to leverage those things. The sorcerers throw their sticks down and these knockoff snakes come by the bunches. I mean, there are tons of snakes crawling all over the floor. And the snake that God had Moses, the rod that God had Moses throw on the ground, Moses takes that staff and throws it on the ground. It becomes a snake. That snake rises up. Come on, guys. Takes the rod. Jesus is the rod. The Lord is my shepherd. I, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thy rod is with me. Jesus is the rod. Jesus is thrown on the ground. The rod representing the, the stick. The stick representing the tree. The tree representing the cross. Jesus is thrown on the ground. The stick is thrown on the ground. It becomes a snake that rises up. Listen to me. All these other snakes that are on the ground that are coming to kill, steal, and destroy, all of the sorcerer snakes come, and the rod of Jesus, the, the snake that represents the curse, consumes all the snakes around it. That big snake, the Jesus snake, consumes all the little snakes. In other words, Jesus becomes the curse and consumes all the snakes. He consumes the snake of doubt. He consumes the snake of sin. He consumes the snakes of the curse. And then he returns back to the rod. He doesn't stay that way. He returns back to the rod, back into the hand of Moses. I don't have time to go any further. But as you, as you look at the tree of life, that the rod is living, that the cross grows leaves, that though it was cut down, it, it rose again, that though it represented a curse of leprosy, of sin and disease, up close to God's bosom, I am clean. So when you, when you look around, you wonder, where's God? Where's Jesus? Jesus is everywhere all the time, and if you'll just pause, you'll see him. He's in the chaos. He's in the confusion. He's in the gentle breeze, and he's in the cyclone. He's in the small voice, and he's in the explosion. Where's Jesus in, the, in government? Where's Jesus in the church today? Where's Jesus in the, in the, in the shootings and in, the, in an abortion? Where's Jesus in, where, where's Jesus? When you look, you'll find him. And listen to me, your mess nor theirs, your mess, come on, your mess, your sin, your doubt, your unbelief, your problem, your whatever, your circumstances, your mess, their mess, their doubts, their unbeliefs, their good, their bad, your good, their bad, is not outside of the omnipresence of God. If there's anything I want you to get from this, is that it is not good, nor is it evil, that keeps you from or draws you to God. It's Jesus. It's the rod. It's the right hand. Father, right now, in Jesus' name, I pray for every person listening and every person watching. 
to attempt to divorce the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and the struggle and the work and the, the lack of grace and the lack of love and cling tightly. Maybe it's a symbol, the old rugged cross, but it's a symbol of Christ. In Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. Hit the hearts, hit the lights, go crazy on that. Let everybody know that you're glad that they are here. Also, hashtag live, hashtag recorded. One more verse, Acts chapter 17, verse 27 says this, so that they should seek the Lord in hope. I'll, no, 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 no. You, you, you don't need to just blow by this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let, I'm going to give it to you before I let you out of here. Let me see where I, I'm going to pull this up real quick right here. God did this so that men would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him. Listen to this. And you may want to go study what did he do. God did this so that we would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him. One more time. God did this so that we would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he is not far from any of us. That's it. I'm done. I'll see y'all later. God did this so that we would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he is not far from any one of us.